So guys, I've had my G63 for a while, but it seems like, oh my God, it's evolving into something else. Wow, so uh, G Pokedex, um, what type of G Wagon is this? The 4x4 four four squared adds double the G DNA to the G63. A more GG class, you say? Well, according to this, this new version of the squared really brings the idea of the squared into our new generation. And what it's doing is essentially we've got the most off roadiness of grads mixed with the most performance of AMG into what they're calling the most G-Class G-Class ever. Because those are the two real main sides, if we think of the modern G, what it uh, stands for and what we think of it as. It's all about either the off-roading capability and it being the best off-roading vehicle in the world, or having the crazy performance side of an AMG that's something of this size and shape and aerodynamic size and height and everything just should not have. And this G63 squared really brings that idea and multiplies it, well, squared. Now, this is not the first time that Mercedes or AMG have made an extreme G-Wagon of this ilk. Of course, the most famous one was the 6x6, which of course had the three axles. It was a gigantic truck that didn't look like it could ever be roadworthy, something like, you know, Batman would own to smash through a villain's lair. But this was a roadworthy car, probably made a lot more of them than you think they might. From that was birthed then the predecessor to our car today, which was the G500 squared, interestingly not dubbed an AMG. And then probably the zaniest one of all, which was the G Law Delay by my back, which, you know, makes no sense at all. But it's amazing that it actually exists. Today's car brings the game forward. It takes all of the updates of the newest generation of the 463 G Wagon and brings it into a car that probably shouldn't handle and drive the way that this one does. And this time, it's a proper AMG, okay? So it's really exciting. Let's dive in today and check out every detail of this, the brand new G63 squared. So guys, today's episode of RBR is sponsored by my favorite wallet company, the Ridge, why are they my favorites? Because like you guys, I love carbon fiber and they make simply the best carbon fiber wallets that I've ever seen. Look at that, matches exactly your car. You can get the forged one as well. Now with slim wallets, I'm usually used to this type of one. Yes, I'm a bit of a tart with the, uh, the brand, but these can only hold you know, five, six cards maybe. Whereas in the Ridge, you can get up to 12 cards plus cash within the cash strap here. I also love that when I put it in my pocket, it doesn't bulge at all, it's super slim. And it's got RFID blocking technology so no one can take money out of any of my cards. Now, of course, I've got a discount for you guys. All you need to do is go to theridge.com forward slash RBR, use the code RBR, you'll get 10% off one of these awesome carbon wallets. Help support the channel as well and you'll have something super stylish and something that matches lovely motorsport cards. So go to ridge.com forward slash RBR. So guys, G-Wagon is not a singular model anymore at Mercedes-Benz. As of 2020, G-Class actually sits as a separate kind of entity within Mercedes, much like Mercedes-AMG, Maybach, or the EQ cars. So they really take this vehicle very, very seriously. They understand that it is an icon of the car industry and probably, arguably, their most important vehicle. So G stands alone as its own kind of unit. And then this monster turns up and it is an absolute monster. I look tiny. I promise you, I'm not five foot two, okay? I promise you this. I've had this problem in the past, but this thing exasperates it a little bit. Um, but it's, it's a hulking, hulking thing. And what other adjective could you use when it's painted in Magno Green Hell? Now to talk about this, we have to kind of delve back into what they had in the old G500 squared, because that was an impressive thing as well, taking the six by six, chopping it up a little bit, and creating something that was, well, they in fact only thought that they were gonna build a few hundred of those, and I think they wound up building something like over 2,000. So just demand for that vehicle alone, very impressive. Now, though the G500 used a lot of AMG body bits and actually you know, looked as extreme as an AMG, um, it was never dubbed an AMG. That's why it was called the G500 squared. Now, some of that might have been down to the fact that it wasn't as powerful as the G63 back then. It was 4.16 brake horsepower, 0 to 16 around about six and a half seconds. 
the old V8 G63 back then would not have been as good at dealing with the extreme kind of um, entry angles and the, you know, the degrees that this would handle in more extreme off-roading areas. So it was never dubbed an AMG and probably for good reason in that way. Apart from that, the car was very, very impressive. It had a dual damper and spring setup, um, which that car needed because it still had the fixed front suspension. And of course, everything else modified with the special portal axles and gear hubs in order to give it that increased um, ride height and clearance. Um, a clearance, in fact, that's actually a little bit more than our car today, which I'll explain to you later on. But just generally, that generation of G-Wagon, in terms of its ability to be dynamic, was hindered by the fact that it had that horrible recirculating ball steering that just made everything so stiff. And, you know, it was a good bicep workout if you were trying to drive fast that car. Um, but our new 463 threw all of that out the window. We've got an independent front suspension, you know, proper steering that you would liken to our normal AMG 4x4s as well. Totally changed the game. And what's great is that our new car brings all of that across and doesn't ensue it. Because you might think that they could have been lazy and, you know, just gotten the base of the old squared, less work, etc., and just popped the shell of the new one on there. Um, that's not what's gone on at all. Instead, this G63 squared has adopted the idea of the special portal axles, but married it with the independent front suspension, which in itself is quite a technical feat, actually. Now, you may be wondering, what is all this stuff about portal axles? What does it all mean? Well, the aim of the game here is ride height and ground clearance. And that is what our portal axles essentially allow us to do. And to explain it a little bit better, I'm going to bring you in closer and we're going to have a look underneath the front of the car. Now, the thing about the portal axles is this. Normally in a car, you have your axle directly in the middle of your wheel. Then you have your drive shafts and they provide power to it because it's easy. It goes right in the center and you can provide power quite easily. Because we're trying to get ground clearance of an extra 10 centimeters over the normal G, that means we can't have the axle so low down because it would hit stuff. It's basic, right? So what, you happen, what happens with the portal axles is your axles and your drive shafts sit higher and then you have these geared hubs come down and they provide the power to the wheels. So essentially, that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing no axle, you're not seeing the usual stuff. You've got new subframe here that we'll talk about, but the actual axles and the drive shafts sit higher. So AMG have installed single stage spur gears in each of the wheel carriers, which allow us to transfer the power from our drive shafts then into the wheels. Now, one interesting technical innovation from the previous one is that the old car used what are called straight tooth gears, which would invariably then make noise while you're driving. And I'm told it would become pretty annoying after a time. Whereas in this car, we've got these helical gears, which are different shaped and essentially they don't make the same noise. So this is gonna be a, a car that's more enjoyable in that regard when you're driving around normally. Now, and the other big innovation here, like I said, is that we still have our independent front, front suspension. And what AMG have done is have a, additional subframe underneath our ladder chassis here to allow that to happen. Um, so yes, we should still have that lovely, still dynamic feeling of the normal G63 while we're driving this one. Now, despite using those portals, what's interesting is that everything above that area in terms of suspension points and the other stuff that we can see within our wheel arch here actually remains pretty much unchanged versus the standard G63. So our suspension point, steering connection, car down drive shaft position, all identical. Even our gear ratios, etc. they've managed to keep everything pretty much identical to the normal G63. Now where the G500 squared had that specific suspension made for that vehicle, this car basically uses the same adaptive suspension as our G63. Of course, it's been modified. We also have new springs, but you know, the basis of it was the same suspension as our normal car which is cool, right? Now, let's talk about the power. We still use the famous four litre V8 of AMG fame used in pretty much all of their vehicles. And of course, in the G, such a unique sound, such a unique power delivery as well. Doesn't feel like the V8 in any other AMG, which is great. So still in this 585 brake horsepower, 850 Newton meters, and shockingly, 0 60 of five seconds, which I thought wouldn't be a topic on this car, but how they've managed to do that, which is just 0.5 off the standard car, is pretty amazing. I can't wait to see if that's true. I bet I could beat it. If that's the official figure, I bet we could beat it. 
This is normally a lot easier to do <laughs> in a G63. There we go, there we go. So now adjustments have been made to the engine, the steering, the transmission as well, obviously because of the size, the weight, and the application of this vehicle. But you know, generally using the same engine, like I said, not that much changed because presumably it doesn't really need to be because our normal G63 was so fantastic. Weight wise, we're adding only around about 300 kg. So this is around about 2.7 tons, which again, to my mind, you know, that's pretty impressive because you look at the size of it and you think, bloody hell, that's got to be touching three tons. But you're a good, good bit away from that still. Now, the one thing that they have changed is more reinforcement across the body. Okay, that's obviously because of the extra forces that would be going, going on the car. But more interestingly, I found was the D-pillar was reinforced because you actually have a full sized wheel on the back of this because there's a whole new uh, holder for your wheel. And I'll show you that in a second. Now the tires that come with this are the Pirelli Scorpion tires. So Pirelli Scorpion tires, uh, I was talking to the engineers about this and these are essentially the same ones that we had on the G500 because they're so bloody good basically. And they're not just good in off-roading, but they're also really good in just normal road driving. And this is the whole concept of this car, right? You've got to have the AMG side of it and the off-roading side of it. And the breadth of ability of these is brilliant. They've got like a self-cleaning pattern, um, which is so important for, you know, um, when you're off-roading like this, uh, you can see you've got the dirt on top. This car has been off-roading, but where is the dirt inside our, our actual grooves here? It's not there. Um, it's good in terms of noise acoustics as well. It's good in terms of impact, which is really important, of course, for off-roading. But then that time of 0 to 60 in five seconds on normal road use is with these tires as well. So that's impressive. Standard G-Class, of course, comes with Scorpions as well. So again, all making sense. And these are, as I said, the ones that come delivered with the car, off-road ready or road ready. Perfect partner for the G63. And finally, of course, still 4Matic all-wheel drive. In the squared, it's 60% to the rear, 40% to the front. So still rear biased, probably what helps with that launch. Now let's talk about the design, the design, which is just in terms of body proportion. If we compare it to our normal G here, you can see how much taller and wider it is. Width, we're talking around about 10 centimeters, but that figure doesn't mean anything because what happens is you get this lovely carbon piece here on our side wheel arch, both front and rear. And the way that exaggerates it with the huge Pirelli Scorpion tires, like you need to see it in person to really understand and appreciate that. So 10 centimeters wider, 25 centimeters taller. Normal G, you'd get it into most car parks and stuff at two meters. This, this thing's gonna struggle with some of those. We're still gonna try and use it. When I say we, of course I'm gonna bloody buy this thing. How can I not? Look at it. Imagine doing the school run and the grocery shopping in this. It's gonna be great. I've got an interesting parallel here for you today. This is the most extreme off-roading G-Wagon, right? Here's the most extreme Apple Watch. And they kind of match each other quite nicely. I've even got a G on the logo, look. See if I twist my arm enough, that's a G kind of on the back, kind of a green strap as well. You know, oranges and greens and off-roadiness and adventure, all kind of, all right, I'm gonna move on from the Apple segment because we're not sponsored yet. Um, G63 squared is it's really really massive okay this is, this is top quality journalism for you here today it's a huge huge hulking thing they say 10 centimeters ground clearance but look at that i mean that is extreme don't you think when you look at normal g classes and you know they tower over everything on the road this is taking that to another level. Magno Green Hell, which is of course the GTR color, looking fantastic on this. My preference was to film the red one, but then I saw this and I was like, no, it's gonna be this one. The 22 inch wheels look hilariously small. They're actually quite a nice design. You've got the AMG logo here as well, um, which looks good. The satin finish across the top of it. You know, very much off-roady G type hubcap as well on there. And then, you know, the Scorpion ATR tires, which look great. Um, and then so much of the suspension you can see, which to be fair, you can see in the G as well, which is nice. But yeah, very extreme. Then our wheel arch is here. This is what I was talking to you about. Yes, it's only 10 centimeters wider, but it really is. Look at that, that's exaggerated. 
the carbon is beautiful as well next to our paintwork which of course comes across the board then you've got these giant side mirrors look at this it's huge it's way bigger than the normal ones with your indicator now at the bottom instead for regulation but that's like a truck mirror and inside it, it looks so silly but i love it and then when you come around the side again that width transferred across here onto your running boards which if i'm not mistaken these are larger pretty sure these are larger but these are again kept lower along with the exhaust again to make the entire package work so that makes sense because you have to jump on those to then get up into your interior which we will look at in a minute also with some nice green highlights then you'll notice in our inserts here carbon fiber which is also standard here on our g squared so very nice the rear really interesting First, just in terms of its presence, look at that. What a giant hulking thing. Then you've got this. I mean, no car is going to want to even accidentally get close to the back of this because it will destroy it either in reverse or driving into it. That is, that's mental. You've got the nice mud flaps at the back here, which I actually quite like for this model. It's a good look. But more interesting than any of that is this new wheel holder on the back. You actually get a full size G squared wheel on the back, which is great. Alongside obviously the carbon fiber cover itself, which says four by four squared on there, as you can see, which is great, but this is a full size wheel. It's not a smaller wheel. It's not a different design. You can see it's the same design wheel and it's covered in this carbon fiber cover. So I love that because you don't get that in the G63s with the larger wheels either. So very nice. Now on the other side at the top of the roof, there's also something interesting. So right now you find me on top of the G squared. I'm finally taller than you. Made me look short. So this is the other um, roof option, which is the full roof rack, which comes with the stairs over there. Very easy to climb up actually. Then you still got your carbon fiber element like you do on the other one. I'm not tall enough to show you this, but that is your carbon roof spoiler. This is the smaller one, which hasn't got the roof rack. So you just get the aerodynamic carbon spoiler with then the lights in the top as well. And then those lights paired with these lights are gonna give you a massive light carpet on the ground when you're driving this, which again, is gonna be really useful either off-roading or just driving normally. So that's the design of it. I love it in this shade. Let me know what you think of it. So guys, that's your G63 squared design. Let's head inside now and see the little bit cool changes that they made on the inside. Now I own a G63 and this is a little bit more extreme in trying to get in. I can get used to that, this is cool. It's nice for a short guy. A lot higher. My God. You know that feeling you get when you jump in a G and you're really high? This is like double the G feeling of being even, even higher and even, even wider. I mean, we know we've got those massive arches over there, right? Which are like so much wider. How are we gonna do McDonald's drive-through in this boys and girls? That might be a little bit problematic. What's interesting is the rest of the interior really quite similar. Here I've got some nice details like, see the G63 four by four logo there, which is nice. You also get a welcome light I'm told as well from the inside, which is really cool. But generally, I mean, that's pretty much your standard G63 interior, right? Like the matte carbon fiber and the, and the green stitching. You do get diamond stitch, so you get the best type of interior within the G squared. So much comes standard. And one of the coolest things is actually right up here. Look at this. That's not real mirror. That's a camera, which you can switch between your standard mirror, which you probably never use because look at that, or to this where the camera sits on our rear roof, which is cool. So I was not expecting that. That's really cool. But yeah, let's turn it on now. Exhaust on or else always keep the exhaust on. Remember that by the t-shirt guys, which is coming out soon. Um, yeah, looks good. Let's see what it sounds like. Any different? Yeah, pretty much standard G63 there. Yeah, pretty much standard G-Wagon. Let's take this out and see what it's like on the road itself.
Okay guys, first 100 yards impressions are, it feels exactly like the normal G63, which I'm kind of happy about. Seriously, it doesn't feel all that different. Like it is a hulking thing and I'm sitting probably as tall as Actros driver or a Unimog, but um, yeah, very similar. The steering's lovely. You know, when you talk to, no offense to the engineer sitting next to me, but when you talk to the brand engineers and stuff, you do have a little bit of paranoia. Like when they say the steering is good, is it really good? Is it the same? But this is one of those moments where like, actually it feels very, very similar. Love hearing the V8 in the, uh, in the background as well. Steering is nice. I'm scared of where the sides of this car are, but then I'm actually quite aware of where the wheels are on the road, which is a nice feeling. So it's not like you don't know exactly where your wheels are, or what they're doing. Got a hairpin now. <laughs> hairpin in the G. Oh, that sounds good. So yeah, like your, uh, this would be your average driving down some country roads and you know, really it feels quite normal now. I've got a bridge ahead of me. That's a scary sight, isn't it? And something that's as wide as this. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's, let's try it. Scary. Oh, not that difficult, was it? Scrape. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. Not in a, mag not in a Magno green squared. So yeah, first impressions, nowhere near as scary as you think it might be jump, looking from the outside in. Basically feels like a normal G-Wagon, which is nice because there's a lot of interesting engineering happening with the portal axles and um, the hubs that we have on, you know, to transfer the power. So it's not as simple as you might think to get it to feel the same. But then I think a lot is helped by the fact that this 463 generation is so good in its base anyway that they barely had to change, you know, anything with the suspension or anything above those portal axles to really make it still behave like a proper G. But I think it'll be interesting to actually see what this does on some more off-roading areas because we can see that the basic basis of the car is the normal G-Wagon. It's going to be fine in high streets and doing your shopping and your school runs to the uh, few lucky people who... I actually really want one, you know. I'll have to sell a kidney or something. Not my own, of course. This is cool. Normal roads, huge hulking G-Wagon, easy peasy. The rear mirror is interesting. It's a little bit, it weirds you out a little bit, if I'm honest. It kind of, I'm not used to that because I've not seen it in any other car other than the AMG one, actually, bizarrely. Stability seems good. Steering is still, you know, you've still got nice feel even in little movements like you have in the normal G. This is nice. What does the engine feel like? Drop it down a gear or two. Yeah, very similar. You can barely discern any difference. This is all good stuff, because you know you, you expect differences, you really do. Of course you can feel a bit more body roll going through a corner like this. But you know, I'd liken it to just being that much taller more than, than, more than anything else really. And it's not disconcerting, because you kind of expect it being at the level you are. In fact, you want to feel it a little bit as well, I feel, so you know what the body's doing. I want to ask my passengers, how sick do you feel in the back, guys? How would you like to see my breakfast? I would not like to see a breakfast. I have a feeling we're going to see everyone's breakfast when we go in the off-roading section in a minute. That's fine, it's part of the G experience. Oh look, common as muck. Gonna be all over the high street soon. Look, I'm kind of one-handing it now. That's how quickly you kind of get used to it. Oh, the V8 sounds good. It's such a part of the G-Wagon's heritage now, that V8. Like, you just can't get away from it. Like, they need to have a V8 in some type of G-Wagon forever, somehow. Bribe some government ministers or something, I don't care, just get it done. V8's forever. It's got a really deep rumble to it, actually. I mean, it sounds a bit different to mine in that way. I'm sure the exhaust system is pretty much the same. The length might be a little bit different, but... We've also, to be fair, got some nice surroundings and some cliffs next to us, so the acoustics probably pretty good for a nice exhaust note. Oh, tunnel. Tunnel. As all 
good AMG fans. We saw a tunnel, went through it and decided we need to go through it again. Just for good measure. I wish I could drive a bit faster for you guys, but this road is limited in terms of speed, so we're gonna have to keep it you know, to lower speeds. But I'm really impressed with just how quickly I got to grips with the size of the car, the steering, um, kind of where the wheels are, the width of it, the body roll. Like it's all become, I feel like I'm driving my G at home, just sitting a bit higher, which is undoubtedly exactly what they would have been aiming for in terms of a you know, technical achievement. Um, I haven't driven the previous G500 squared, but I've heard it's, you know, quite, quite a similar experience in terms of the steering and the, you know, the kind of numbness that you had in the previous G wagon. So, you know, this is a big step up. So the area that we're going to is actually um, a place where Mercedes do a lot of off-road testing. So you'd think with off-roading they have the shock all, you know, they have grads and all that, and that's all they need. But they actually take these cars to various places, and this is one of the most extreme when it comes to off-roading, so probably the best place for us to see what this can do in some more challenging terrain. Right guys, so we're gonna switch first into trail mode. We've got a trail here, we're gonna go up a mountain, so we're gonna go a little bit faster on some light off-roading. That's gonna be done with that, so center uh, differential that goes into trail mode. You can see trail written on here as well. Exhaust on, please. Thank you. Right. Let's get going. So, I mean, this is short work for even a normal G-Wagon, but in this, it just feels like you're going down a normal country lane. It's quite hilarious, actually, just how easy uh, the squared makes, uh, you know, what would be slightly more difficult off-roading for a normal G. Now, this is just like, you just kind of stroll in the park, really. I know it's not that way for my passengers, but um, as the driver, you're very happy, you're fine. Get a vomit bag. Don't get it on the bloody leather, though. It's not allowed, otherwise you go straight down the mountain. You know, this is all really elementary stuff. Beautiful landscape here, though. And um, like we were just discussing with the engineer, you, just, you don't need to worry about it. The car can basically, you'll feel a bit uncomfortable, perhaps, as a driver, which I'm honestly not. Kind of do this one-handed, if I'm honest with you. Um, it's how easy this car makes it feel. Beautiful weather today. We're almost at the end of uh, October, and it's 27-ish degrees here in Toulouse or just outside of Toulouse rather. Um, quite beautiful. Surrounded by many fans today. My, my dad jokes are getting terrible, aren't they? I just need to give up. Why do you guys even subscribe to this channel? Let's give it some beans over here. Short work. Oh, beautiful. What I love about extreme cars is how they're not extreme when you drive them. They're extreme in what they're able to do, but if you don't want them to be crazy and extreme, then they aren't, and they have that breadth of ability. And that's really important. Remember, this side that we're doing now is, this is the AMG side of the equation that we discussed, that yes, we can do all the off-roading, which is so G-Wagon, but this is also meant to be extreme in terms of the AMG ability of this vehicle. And I can see glimmers of, of you know, that brilliance in there. You'll have to wait for a full proper road drive Hopefully in my own car where we'll uh, discover that and what drive throughs we can actually fit it in after a blast down a motorway. But yeah, this is all good signs to me. This is of a very fun car. I think I'm now three times as excited as I was coming into this about driving this for a, a much longer period of time. So guys, that was our first look and first drive of the super fun G63 squared. Got to drive this thing with the windows down at the back. Um, definitely an extended drive coming in the future. Hopefully I can find a few kidneys, sell them and buy one of these. And if that happens, then I'll bring you the full story. Otherwise, at some point, we will definitely drive this and really push it on uh, normal roads as well. So if you've enjoyed this, please do like, subscribe to RBR. And I'll see you guys next time.